In one of my previous videos on XLOOKUP errors, we had a few great questions come up on using whole column references. So in this video, I'm going to explain the pros and cons of this technique and explain why you might want to avoid these at all costs. All right, so I'll first explain what a whole column reference is and why you might want to use one. And then I'll explain two reasons not to use whole column references as they can get you in trouble. So in this example here, this is the example we had from that previous video on XLOOKUP errors. And in that video, I explained one common error with XLOOKUP is when your lookup and return array ranges are different lengths. That will return an error or XLOOKUP will return an error when that's the case. And I explained uh, using Excel tables as one alternate solution. And that's where the question came up, well, how about whole column references? So what's a whole column reference? Well, in this formula below here, I have the same formula, but it's now using whole column references. As you can see for the lookup and return arrays, we're referencing the entire column here. So you can see column G is referenced. There's no row numbers here in this reference. So that means it's referencing the entire column. You can also see that down over here where Excel's highlighted all of column G. And in order to write this, uh, when you're writing the formula, I'll just go ahead and delete this here. You can just select column G, you can just click on it, select it, and that's going to add the entire column reference here. So there's a few advantages to these. Uh, first of all, anything that's added below your table or range in the future will automatically be included in the formula. And that can be good or bad, and we're gonna talk about that later. The other advantage is that both of the lookup and return array lengths will be the same length. So you don't have to worry about that range length error like I talked about in that previous video. The uh, formula is also shorter and a bit easier to read, I would say. You can see the comparison between the formula text and both of them over here. And this is definitely gonna be shorter and maybe easier to read. And then the other advantage is that whole column references are easier to create a reference to. So again, you can just select the entire column here. Keyboard shortcut is control space to select an entire column. And that'll be easier than some of the other shortcuts we looked at in the previous video to select uh, columns, especially if they contain blanks or using the mouse and dragging down can take a really long time. So those are some of the advantages of whole column references. They're also referred to as full column references or entire column references. All right, so now we'll look at two reasons not to use whole column references. The first reason is performance. And this is a great article here by my fellow uh, Microsoft MVP, Charles Williams about performance with whole column references. Here he goes through uh, several tests, uh, also talks about why these may or may not be good in terms of performance. And as you can see here, it depends on the function. So some functions don't work well with whole column references. As he points out in this article, some product is one of those. So if you're using some product formulas often, you definitely don't want to use whole column references with some product formulas and also array formulas can cause issues. Uh, down here, he has this nice table that shows some of the results of his test. And as you can see, these pink and red cells uh, mean really long calculation times for these formulas. And it's based on just a test of 1000 formulas. So I recreated a few of these for myself over here in Excel on this uh, sheet here. I have uh, the first test with the sum product formula. And in this column here, the first uh, column is using whole column references. Again, this is just 1000 formulas here, referencing all of column A. So you can see it's a very simple formula. And then over here, we have the same formula, but it's referencing 30,000 cells. So still uh, quite a bit of cells here, or a big range, uh, but instead of the entire column, it's just referencing 30,000 cells. And here's the performance difference. So for the whole column uh, reference, the average calculation time is 15.5 seconds. Uh, whereas with the range reference, the average calculation time is 0.3 seconds. So massive difference here. And Excel just doesn't handle some product with whole column references. So it's just really good to know that. Uh, another case here, I was using some of the new dynamic array formulas. And in this case, the filter function. So this is an array formula. When you use whole column references with array formulas like this, uh, and in this case here, we're using the filter function. And you can see I'm referencing the entire column here and doing a filter on that. Uh, when you do that, this whole column reference uh, took 20.9 seconds to calculate. And again, that's 1000 formulas copied down there. When you use a regular range reference there, uh, the calculation time improves to just one second. So again, a massive difference 
in calculation time here for a relatively simple formula here that's just uh, returning multiple results to a single cell using text join and filter. So now we'll look at the second reason to not use whole column references. And to me, this is the most important reason because it's the one that's got me in the most trouble when using them in the past. And I want to keep you out of trouble as well. So on this sheet here, I have a simple summary report and I have a few sum if and count if formulas that are using whole column references. As you can see here, I'm referencing the data sheet and then the entire column E and column G. I also have a count if formula here that's referencing the entire column E. Now these formulas here are returning the wrong numbers. Can you guess why that is? Well, don't worry, I'll explain. Let's go over to the data sheet here. And on this sheet, I just have a simple uh, range of data. This is not an Excel table. It's just a range of data. And the problem is down here at the bottom of the table, I've added some additional calculations down here. I just wanted to quickly know what the average uh, deal amount was for each region. So I used a simple average if formula here to calculate those results. But the problem is, is that these numbers here, these three rows are now included in the results of my formulas on the summary tab. So as you can see over here, we have 1,003 with the total uh, deal count. That's actually incorrect. There's only 1,000 deals in that range. So these numbers are incorrect because again, they're using whole column references and including those three rows at the bottom. So this is where this, these whole column references can get you in trouble because when you're first starting out and setting this up, you might think, oh, well, I'll never add data down to the bottom of this table. But as time goes on and your workbooks grow, uh, you might forget about that, or you might share this with other users that don't know that you're using whole column references. And like your boss might come in here and add some data to the bottom of the table or the top or something like that. And those numbers will be included in your formulas. And it's just, it's not just some formulas. So over here, I'm also have an X lookup formula with kind of the same thing. This is an X lookup uh, searching in reverse order. So negative one to search last to first to return the last deal amount, which is a great feature of X lookup. But the problem is, is that it's actually returning this number down here, this average number, instead of this number here, which is the last deal for that specific region. So again, it's returning incorrect results. So let's take a look at some alternative solutions to whole column references. The first is Excel tables. And this is typically my preferred method when you can use Excel tables. So in these columns here, I have these same formulas, but I'm now referencing an Excel table. So I have an Excel table over here on this data table sheet, and that's what's being referenced here. This is the table name, and then the entire column name of the table. Same with the deal amount column here. I'm also using that in the count if. So over here on this sheet, I have an Excel table here. And an Excel table is nice because it's really like a container within a worksheet for your data. And you can reference the entire columns in the table and not have to worry about the data above or below the table being included as well. So I still have those average if calculations down here, but I don't have to worry about those or anything outside of the table here with my formulas that reference the table. And another nice part is that I can add new rows to the bottom of the table and that data will still automatically be included in the formulas because I'm referencing the entire column of the table but again, I don't have to worry about data outside of the table. So I've talked about tables in the past. I have other videos on tables. I'll put links to those in the description below so you can learn more about using tables. But that's my preferred method over whole column references. Uh, another option is dynamic named ranges. So in this example here, again, I have the same formulas, but now I'm using a dynamic named range. And these are a little more advanced. I'll hit Control F3 to open the name manager here and I have my named ranges here. So this is the one for the deal amount column. This uses the offset function along with the count A function to count the number of used rows in a column and then uh, creates a range for that and it will automatically resize based on how many used rows you have. These can get you in trouble too and they can be tricky if you have a lot of blanks in your data and things like that. So there's, there's other methods to this as well for dynamic name ranges. This is just one particular technique or method. I don't use these as frequently. I'd much prefer to use Excel tables because they're easier to maintain and easier for others to understand as well. But I did want to mention dynamic named ranges. So that's the pros and cons of using whole column references. I've also listed all of those on this sheet here and I'll make this uh, workbook available for free download. I'll put a link in the description below with some of the pros here. Again, just to, to wrap things up, 
Uh, the pros is that they're easier to select the entire column, especially if your cells have or your data has a lot of blanks in it. Uh, any new values added to the data set will be automatically included, which can be good or can be bad, as we've seen, and that the formulas are shorter and easier to read. Uh, the cons with whole column references, again, is that the performance can be slowed down depending on the function that you're using. A lot of functions are optimized for whole column references, but it will depend on the functions you're using, so be careful there. And as we saw, they can return incorrect results as well. So stay out of trouble with that. I don't want you producing any incorrect results due to whole column references. I've made that mistake in the past, and I want to keep you out of trouble there. And then we looked at some alternatives being Excel tables and structured reference formulas, dynamic named ranges. And one I forgot to mention was uh, spill ranges as well. So you can reference the entire spill range. Depending on how your data is set up, that might be an easier way to do it than trying to reference an entire column. So I hope these tips have helped you. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button and then head over to excelcampus.com slash free to grab our free Excel Pro Tips ebook. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.